Hello and welcome to the third section of Chapter 11. We're getting ready to go over epinephrine under emergency medications. As always, this is Keith Widmeyer with Wayne County EMS. All right, um, epinephrine, uh, the generic name is known as epinephrine, and the trade name is known as adrenaline. Epinephrine works by relaxing the bronchial passages of the airway and constricting the blood vessels. The opening of the airway allows the patient to move more air into and out of the lungs, which will increase the amount of oxygen in the bloodstream. Constriction of the blood vessels slows the leakage of fluids from the blood vessels into the space around the cells of the body. As an EMT, you can give epinephrine by means of an auto-injector uh, if all of the following criteria are met. Uh, the patient exhibits signs and symptoms of severe allergic reaction, including respiratory distress and or signs of symptoms of shock. The medication is prescribed for the patient for your EMS system, authorizes EMTs to carry the medication, and medical direction has authorized <coughs> use for this patient. In Kentucky, um, EMTs are actually on standing orders for sub-Q epi, not just the auto-injectors. They have the ability to use the auto-injectors, but they can also um, draw up and administer subcutaneous epinephrine. The dosage for that will be 0.15 for children and 0.3 for adults. As far as contraindications go, there are no contraindications in the emergency setting for um, the use of epinephrine auto-injectors or epinephrine uh, subcutaneously in uh, life-threatening emergency situations of anaphylaxis. Some of the adverse side effects of epinephrine include rapid heart rate, anxiety, excitability, nausea, vomiting, chest pain or discomfort, headache, and dizziness. EpiPens are available in two strengths. The EpiPen auto injector is 0.3 milligrams, it is used for individuals weighing 66 pounds or more. The Ep excuse me, Epi Junior auto injector is 0.15 milligrams and is, in, is available for individuals weighing between 33 and 66 pounds. Both str strengths deliver a single dose, and there are some other ones out there on the market that will deliver two doses. Um, honestly, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but they do exist. <clears throat> some special considerations when dealing with epinephrine. Use appropriate PPE, as always. Um, make sure to practice the six rights of medication administration, just like when you're administering any medication. Use a pulse oximeter. Give oxygen by a non rebreather mask. And assess lung sounds uh, frequently. Look closely at the auto-injector container or at the ampule of epinephrine. Make sure that the epi has not been ex has not expired. Look into the clear window of the epi container, and the, so and the solution itself should be clear. If the solution is discolored or contains solid particles, precipitate, do not use the medication. If a red flag is present in the window of the auto-injector, the epinephrine has already been injected. Find out if the patient has already taken any dose before before you arrived today, or before you arrived, or if the patient is has used the auto injector in the past and forgot to get an EpiPen. Regarding subcutaneous Epi, um, big things to remember with subcutaneous Epi is that it needs to be uh, in a dark area. It can't be a, it's light sensitive medication, so it can't be exposed to the light. And um, Epi is one of the few medications that, when they say it expires at this date, they mean it. It expires. Um, when it expires, its efficacy decreases significantly compared to many other drugs who come out at who expire at approximately 90% efficacy. All right. Step one for administering an epi auto injector. 
put in appropriate PPE, confirm that the patient has signs and symptoms of a severe allergic reaction, confirm that the patient has a physician prescribed epi auto injector. Um, of course, like I said, in Kentucky, we're allowed to carry epi auto injectors or subcutaneous epi. Obtain an order from the medical direction, either online or offline. Make sure the epi is not expired. Look through the clear window of the EpiPen container for, to make sure that the solution is uh, clear and that there's no precipitate in it. Next, you're going to remove or assist the patient in removing the EpiPen from the container by unscrewing the cap of the EpiPen carrying case and re removing the EpiPen from the storage container, its storage tube. Step three, you're going to grasp or assist the patient in grasping the EpiPen with the black tip pointing downward. I cannot emphasize this enough. Do not, under any circumstance, put your thumb around that black tip. It will, uh, it has happened. Uh, needles have gone through people's thumbs. All right, next step four, uh, form a fist or, or have the patient do so around the EpiPen. Uh, with the black tip down, with the other hand, pull off the safety cap, which is the gray cap on top, from the other end of the auto injector. And step five, press the auto injector against the outside portion of, um, of the thigh, or assist the patient in doing so for about 10 seconds until you hear it release. Hold the EpiPen perpendicular, about a 90 degree angle, to the thigh. It's designed to go through clothes. The auto injector will propel a uh, spring-driven needle into the patient's thigh and then inject the drug into the muscle of the outer thigh. This will cause the, pa um, the patient pain and the patient will move very suddenly. After the drug has been delivered, the window in the auto injector will show red. Remove the EpiPen from the patient's thigh or have the patient do so. And massage the injection area for 10 seconds. Document the patient's name, drug name, and dose given. Time of administration, patient's response to the drug. If an online order was received by medical direction, document the name of the physician giving the order. The patient will need to be transported to for additional care, recess every five minutes, and continuously monitor the patient's airway and breathing. It's important to remember that um, depending on the type of allergen that caused this anaphylactic reaction, they may have a second reaction en route to the hospital, so you need to be prepared to administer a second dose.